Good morning, guys. Welcome back to another video from Busan, from the port of Busan. As you can see, I'm right down in the south of the city in the harbor area. You've got fishing boats and actually tugboats working away. But this building here, this is what we're going to visit today. This is Jalgachi Fish Market. It is the largest fish market in the whole of South Korea. And of course, where there's fish market, where there's fishermen, there's going to be some food. Should be a good video. Come with me. Let's go explore. And here we are, the main building of Jagalchi Market. Straight away, you come into a whole pool of wet seafood. Basically, it's a wet seafood market, and the seafood, they are alive. So I'll give you a quick look around here, show you what they've got. Okay, the first thing I should say is that it's very, very clean, incredibly clean, especially for a fish market. Sometimes fish markets can be a little bit hot, a little bit smelly, a little bit rough and ready, but this place is very clean. It looks very clean. It doesn't smell fishy, that like rotting fishing smell. There are so many varieties of seafood here. And the first thing I notice are these abalone and all different sizes of abalone actually, but I don't know these as abalone. Where I come from, they're actually called ormas. This one is trying to escape. This stool has a plate of the shells. And let me just show you, on the underside, you have mother of pearl. So I always keep the shells after I catch them and eat them. How gorgeous is that? Beautiful, beautiful shells. And you can probably just buy these. They're probably selling them. Another thing here are these eels or hagfish. Really typical in Busan. Maybe we'll try and get some of these to eat later, but you'll see these at almost every store holder because they're such a popular fish to eat down here in Busan. Tiny little baby scallops. Actually, this is quite an interesting thing to show you. So here we have sea cucumber, which obviously looks like a bit of a cucumber, which is why they have it. You have these large whelks, maybe. You've got these sea squirts, or <laughs> the nice name for them rather than sea squirts is called sea pineapple. And you can see they are prickly like a pineapple. And then I've got to show you these. Can you guess what these are called? Or even can you guess what they look like? They're actually called blowworms. <laughs> but there is another name, which I'm not going to say. It's more colloquial, it's more slang name. But it definitely, the slang name kind of sounds like what they look like. And those blowworms are a right delicacy down here. They're eaten raw. Not sure I'm going to be trying them. Look at the size of those mussels. Absolutely ginormous. Here you have all different types of snapper, or sea bream I probably call it, but you could call it red snapper. But here you have a fish that I want you to remember because this is the fresh version of the fish. It's called yellow, as you can tell, yellow croaker, or sometimes red lip croaker, but I don't actually think the lips are that red but it's called yellow croaker. And I think when we go out into the other part of the market, we're gonna see this dried. Now you can buy the seafood here or the fish here in the market and take it upstairs to a restaurant and they'll, for a small fee, they'll cook it for you. I thought she was gonna spray me with her, with her host. You'd, for a small fee, they'll cook it for you. And to help with that, if you did want to do that, they have these boards here that show the average prices of each type of fish in the market. Now, obviously, some will cost a little more, some will cost a little less, and it's down to how you negotiate with each storeholder, but at least you'll have a rough guide for how much you're being charged. Right, now it's time to explore the older, more traditional outer market. Here we go, right outside the main building. The market begins, and you've just got all these fresh fish lay out, laid out on the floor, and I bet you before the main building existed, this was how the market started. All the same fish, of course, as inside. In fact, even more varieties. But these, these aunties selling their fish outside. And I think this is quite a large part of the market. Look at that. All fresh, all look amazing. Again, with the live fish kept in the big buckets. Let's go check it out properly. Actually here, now you can see these sea squirts. You can see why they call them the sea pineapples, because they do look like baby little pineapples. Now they're out of the water, you can really see that, but bowls and bowls and bowls of them. Yes, this is more like it. This is what makes me happy. You've got all the little wooden stools with their awnings coming out and all the aunties, actually all women, working behind these, which, well, I haven't seen that before. I haven't seen it where it's all women working in the market. Just, I see a guy down there, but mainly women. Got fish drying from the rafters or from the 
the beams. Look at that, how cool is that? And you can see what they're doing here. So they've cut the fish open, they've taken the guts out, as you would expect, because obviously that will make it go rotten. And then they've put a little piece of wood to keep the fish open. They probably salted it and they're drying it in the air, so it's air drying. Can you guess what this fish is called? Just from looking at it, it's named after what it looks like. What do you reckon? It's called ribbon fish, and it's a deep sea fish. You can see why it's called ribbon fish, because it's very flat, very thin, but deep sea fish, look at the jaws on that. Now, the indoor market was cool, I enjoyed it. Always love seeing those places, as I said, but it's this outdoor market which feels much more local, much more real, I would say. Mm, not less sanitized, because actually everything is very sanitized and very, very fresh. But this is what gets me going. This is what gets my excitement up. And I've got to be honest, guys, Busan, everyone said Busan is amazing. It's not doing a huge amount for me, but being in this market, I can be anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter where I am. If I'm in a good food market, I'm excited and I'm loving it. You have to come to this part of the market, the outdoor part of the market. Wow, another way to dry the fish. If you're not hanging them up, like a lot of the stools have over here and that we've seen, you can put them out in these nets, which are raised on little crepes. All of these fish are drying. Two bits of bad news. The first is that the blue sky is gone and it started raining, just my luck, of course. And the second is there are two fish restaurants that I wanted to take you to to eat, to eat some of the eel. The first was closed, okay, fine. So I went to the next one that I found and there's terrible, terrible, well, construction work going on, so there's no chance we can film there. So I thought I'd mix it up. I'm actually gonna come to a seafood market and not eat seafood because there's another place that this place is very famous for, specifically in this market, and that actually is beef offal barbecue. So yeah, don't like to do things by the book on this channel, but it is actually right next to the fish market. I mean, it's part of the fish market. The fishermen, the local fishermen, used to go out for weeks or months at a time fishing, and obviously they'd be eating fish day after day out at sea, and when they came back to the market to land their fish and sell it, the first place they came to eat was this, to eat the beef tripe. If you've been eating fish the entire time. The first thing you crave when you come back to land is meat. And the cheapest part of the meat, well, obviously, it's the offal. Although I have a feeling times have changed just a little bit on the price. Let's see what it looks like. Ah, okay. So it's not just a restaurant. You have a load of different stalls, all numbered, actually. Not too busy. It is about mid-afternoon, so we've just missed the lunch rush. Let's pick one. I have no idea which we should be picking, but let's pick one and order. Actually, you know that I believe a lot of these places, you've got to give the customer round, not just go on the one place that's famous. I think this one behind me actually featured on TV, which everyone wants to eat here, of course, but this lovely lady has brought me over to her stool, number eight, and we're gonna eat here. Can I have uh, beef and uh, fried rice? Uh, <laughs> okay, we have a language barrier, but it's okay. I think she's gonna use the translating app. The best way to do it is point. So, and this. Oh, yeah, I'm so cool, This is rice, right? Okay, the confusion was not, <laughs> the confusion was not the order. The confusion was actually because the menu is for two people. And she was worried that I'm one person and she was gonna offer me not the main menu. But we're making a YouTube video. Let's order the main menu. It's gonna cost me more. But uh, yeah, I want to show you it. So let's do it. So we've got a new grill. She knows what she's doing. She keeps looking at me to say, right, film this. <laughs> Love it. So you can start to see all of that offal going into the bowl, ready to be grilled. And she added some of this. Might be lime juice, but definitely something acidic. Oh, look at that. The intestines or suet. Look at the fat on the outside of it. Amazing. Yeah, that is going to be good. There it is. A mountain of offal. All beef. What more do you want? But we have <laughs> so many different cuts in there, as we saw her putting in. And then she's obviously brought out all of the side dishes that go with it. So, I think we're ready to grill, and it's her who is going to be grilling rather than me, thank God. Well, not thank, thank God, I'd like to do it, but it's going to be done well. 
You may as well let the expert do it. Oh, you can see the smoke coming off as it goes over onto that grill plate. And in goes a little bit of the fat, the suet, just to moisten the bottom of the pan. Ah, no, she's cooking more of the grill. Oh, that went straight up my nose. The smell of that garlic, you can see. It's got crushed garlic all over it and obviously the vinegar as well. Or the acid. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that. But that little bit of rubbing around the fat to moisten it will mean it doesn't stick to the plate. And then whole garlic cloves go in there. And then on this one, we've got more delicate pieces of offal grilling over the fire. The smells though, guys, the smell is coming off it. Obviously, the smell of charcoal or meat cooking over charcoal is good, but that garlic, the garlic over the charcoal, so, so good with the beefy aroma coming off it. You can see how it's starting to char up already. That's where the flavor is gonna really take off. Okay, so she's moving the cooked pieces onto the sides. It looks like liver and she's telling me, eat now, eat now, hurry up. Little bit, ah, okay, into this dipping sauce. So she's telling me to put the liver, you can see, charred on the outside. I'm gonna give it a little dip into that dipping sauce. Looks like there's ginger and garlic in there with soy sauce and, oh. Acidic, sweet, salty. Perfect combination. Very moist, very delicate, actually. Beef liver, there's a little bit of kick because it looks like there's quite a lot of black pepper in that dipping sauce as well. Mm. It's that good. But it is rich, and that dipping sauce is perfect to cut through it. Offal is best eaten straight away because it will keep cooking once it comes off the hot plate and it will overcook. Wow. This, I think, is the stomach. Look at that. You can see the char from the grill. You can see how delicious and succulent it is. It tastes so good. Ah, uh, I see, I see. Teaching me how to eat. So dip it, take your offal, dip it into the sauce, put it into the salad, pick it up, and then eat. I'm so happy. Oh, happy. <laughs> she understood that word. I'm so happy. Who needs fish in a fish market, right? This one starts cooking away. You can see the caramelization on the outside because that is fat. Actually, it's the intestines with the suet stuffed into it. Even better. And now it's really cooked out. All of that fat is rendered out, leaving that crispy golden. Little pieces of fat, of course, but look how much has come out of it. I hope, I hope she puts the rice in there. Look at that. Look at that. Fat is flavor. And because fat is flavor, she's literally giving me the pieces of fat to eat, putting it in the dipping bowl. Love this. No confusion here of how to eat it. So, let's try it. Oh, man. That is special. Actually, I think it is the intestine. You can see on the outside you have a little bit of the intestine skin, but on the inside, if I can get it back to me, on the inside they've rolled in that suet, they've turned it in on itself, but that fat is not fatty as you would think. As soon as you put it in your mouth and bite into it, it just disappears and you get a little chew from the crispy skin on the outside. That is special. No? <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> So I got told off because I dipped it into this and she told me off. You're not meant to eat it like that. Mm. Mm. So delicious, but I've got to admit guys, that fat is where it's at. That fat is special. Fat has so, I don't joke when I say fat is flavor. Fat has so much flavor. Mm. Fishermen aren't stupid. If the first thing they did was come to this once they hit land again, you know they're smart people, they know food. But she's just started preparing the fried rice. Cool. Look at the color of that. There's a lot of gochujang in there. We've also got onions. A lot of onions and more offal, I think. Or at least 
I saw her chopping some, so I presume that's gone in there. We've got the rice, so already cooked. Ah, that old bits of garlic, not ginger, the old bits of garlic go in as well. Why waste it? We're ready to go. You take a little bit of your nori paper. Ah, okay. So she's showing us. Roll it up and then, and then dip it. And then for you. <laughs> and a little bit of garlic and ginger, put it inside and then eat it. Telling me it's hot. That, again, is special. The rice has a crispy on the bottom, kind of like a paella, it's what I liken it to. And the, but the rice itself is soft when you get into it. And then you have the chew from the offal, the crunch from the onion, and then the spice coming through from the gochujang. And then that toasted nori paper, she toasted it on the, on the charcoal before she gave it to me. That toasted nori paper adds such a vibrant, seafood flavor. I mean, you all know what nori paper tastes like, but I cannot tell you really in words how good this is. Even when it's ready, as I'm eating it, she lets it sit there. Buffered from the proper heat, she's got another pan underneath, but you can see it still just crisps up on that bottom, and then every now and then she stirs it just to mix through those gnarly bits into the rice. Oh, guys, it's so good. Anyway, I did say the prices have obviously changed just a little bit since the fishermen came here. It is 50,000 won, but for the amount of food, for the atmosphere, for the friendliness, I would say it's worth the experience. They're so friendly here. We were just having a chat via Google Translate. She doesn't speak any English, but uh, still trying to talk to me with Google Translate, having a two-way conversation. And uh, she was telling me not many foreigners come here. Well, Japanese people come here, but not many Western tourists come here because she told me that she thought Western foreigners don't eat offal. So guys, there's your challenge. Come here and prove to them, stool number eight, if you do really want, prove to them that you guys do eat offal like me. Because we don't want a bad reputation, do we? Can't miss those final crispy bits. She knows, she knows. What a meal.